Good morning, Facebook family and friends. Uh, Pastor Kim here uh, from Maryville First United Methodist Church. This morning I am up in the balcony of our beautiful sanctuary uh, for the purpose of just uh, having a new and different view of where we are in this time of uh, away from work, away from one another, away from uh, school. Some of you, many of you are in yet another week of homeschooling. And uh, I want to offer a devotional to you that, um, that hopefully you uh, will take to heart. Uh, I'm probably gonna get in trouble for saying this, um, but I'm gonna tell a story about uh, our daughter uh, back when she was in high school, really starting in junior high. Uh, she had done what all uh, young ladies do, uh, what all teenagers do. She had uh, become a little uh, uncontrollable. If you're listening out there, Sarah, know that I love you. I'm just sharing this uh, story, not all the details, but just the story, because I know that all stories have an incredibly good outcome if we work together. And so when Sarah was in junior high and high school, she started getting this attitude and I don't know if that attitude, when I look back on it, I don't know if that attitude was uh, due to uh, her growing up and becoming a, an adult and trying to find her way. Don't know if it was hormones, what it was. I don't even know. Possibly it could have been John and I and our ability to overparent from time to time. And so we struggled in the last couple of years of Sarah's high school years just to get along. That doesn't mean we uh, stopped loving one another. We loved her, she loves us. Uh, it was just a, a rough time for us. And when we sent her off to school in St. Louis uh, to go to UMSL, University of Missouri in St. Louis, um, we, we started re realizing the distance between us and how much we really loved each other and desired to see each other. And after her first semester, coming back for Christmas break, she and I uh, went shopping. It was uh, close to Christmas Eve and we went shopping. We had been shopping all day, had lunch together, treated ourselves to a uh, cappuccino coming home and we pulled up into the driveway. And when we pulled up into the driveway, uh, she was just kind of sitting in the seat next to me and I, can, I could feel her looking at me. And I finally turned to her before we got out of the car and I said, so what's going on? And uh, she looked at me with such love and understanding in her eyes that she said that um, I know that there were times uh, when I was growing up that I was not easy to get along with and uh, we struggled. I was grateful that she recognized that. But what she said next has always just been such a wonderful blessing to my spirit, to my heart, because what she said next was, I just want to tell you and let Dad know how much I appreciate you for all the direction and the uh, hardness that you showed me as I was growing up because I've met kids in St. Louis that didn't have that kind of direction. So I just, I share that brief part of our time with raising children because I, I know that you all are in this time of, of homeschooling. Homeschooling is one of those things that if you're not used to it, if you're a teacher, you're kind of loving it. Um, uh, maybe because you don't have to get dressed. Remember last week I uh, preached a little preaching on making sure that you're getting up and getting moving. So I want to share a devotion that I came across this morning. This devotion comes from uh, once a day nurturing great kids. We know that that takes work. And the scripture that uh, is connected to this is Proverbs 30 verse 13. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet are not washed from their filthiness. That's verse 12. Going into verse 13, there is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. This devotion talks about those eyelids lifted up, which we call today the rolling of the eyes. Testify, if you ever rolled your eyes at your parents, 
and testify if you ever felt the glare coming from your parents after you did the eye roll. So rolling eyes, let's listen to this together. Disdainful is an appropriate word for describing the disrespectful looks you will get from your children. You may tell them you won't tolerate it, but they may ignore you. There may even be a day when a smirk or two will be thrown in with their rolling eyes. If you know it's coming, you can prepare for it. The best preparation is to make sure you don't return the look. Doing so will only negate the corrective action you need to take. Recall how you rolled your eyes at your parents so you can relate to how your child is feeling. As you do so, you will more understand of how you, your child is learning to navigate through this step toward adulthood. The point we need to extract from Proverbs 30 verse 13 is that these behaviors do happen. We can wish and hope it won't, but it does. Regardless of how sweet they seem to be as toddlers, be aware of where your child is in their development. When they hit the eye-rolling stage, simply accept it as another phase that you have to work through. Be diligent about it. Don't let it go unchecked or their defiance might increase. The parenting principles that come for this, uh, you know, as scripture talks about, haughty eyes are expected but not respected. We ponder these points, and maybe you can ponder these as a parent this morning um, when you're uh, about up to here with, uh, with your children by now. What looks or glances do you have that affect your family? We can think about our body language, not just our looks, but our body language uh, when we are in close uh, uh, connection in, in the house for such a long time with one another. How do you handle these looks with your children? How can you prepare for these issues down the road? Just want you to think about those, those rolling eyes, those haughty eyes. Uh, they, they can be a teaching moment for us. Um, you know, Proverbs is, is tough, uh, very, sometimes very strict scripture that is hoping to teach us along the way. There's also other scripture that, that we can share today um, because it really comes down to how we love our children and how we love one another. Uh, there was a quote that was written by uh, Jenny Monchamp, says, Show your children God's love by loving them and others as Christ loves you. Be quick to forgive. Don't hold a grudge. Look for what is best and speak gently into areas of their lives that need growth. Psalm 127 verses 3 through 5 says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb as a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. Psalm 113 verse 9 says, He gives the childless woman a family, making her happy as a mother. Praise the Lord. Titus 2 verse 4 says, These older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children. And so when you're together in your house and you're beginning whatever week it is of homeschooling, of so much closeness and togetherness, remember that, that attitudes may rise up. There are good attitudes that can rise up and there's not so good attitudes that rise up. If you see a rolling eye, take a moment to not return it, but return it with the attitude of love. Love that child that is in front of you. Love them with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. Love them as Jesus loves us. Hey friends, I love you. I hope you're doing okay out there. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.